calculate the length of AE. Okay, so AE is the sort of slant side here on the corner of this pyramid. Do not use the uh, calculator. Leave your answers as third and you do not need to simplify your answer. Okay, so lots of instructions there. Let's first of all see what we can do. Now, um, with a pyramid, okay, we can apply Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, of course, the pyramid is a three dimensional shape. Okay, but when we apply Pythagoras, remember it has to be sort of on right angle to triangles, doesn't it? In two dimensions, in other words, like on a, on a flat sort of um, surface, okay, to apply Pythagoras' theorem. So, what we need to do, we need to try and find triangles here. Okay, now they, they don't have to be on the ground, they could be upright triangles. And perhaps what you can spot straight away here is if you want to find AE, we can actually create a right angle triangle. Okay, if I join okay, A to the center of that pyramid. So hopefully you can see there that there is an upright triangle there, right angled upright triangle there. Yes, it's standing up. But you can apply Pythagoras' theorem to it. Okay, now we know the height of the of the pyramid there, so that will be that side here. Of course, I'm gonna to need to know what this side is, okay, in order to determine AE. Because remember, with Pythagoras' theorem, you've got A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, okay? So I need to know the A, the you know, two of these, don't I, to work out the other one. So I know this height here, but I don't know this here. So I'm going to need to know this before I work out AE. Okay, so how am I going to go about it? Well, questions like this often involve a few steps. And what we could spot is, is that on the base here, they've given us these two sides here. Okay, this side here is 60 and this is 80. And we can actually create another right angle triangle, okay, if we focus on the diagonal here of that um, base, yeah? So if you sort of looking down on it, you're going to end up with a triangle on the base. So that's like the corner D here, right? And I'm looking down now on the pyramid, okay? And it kind of looks like that um, if I look down. So there's A there and there's C. So just imagine you are a drone above looking down and you'd have the diagonal then of the pyramid base. There's the center here, okay? Um, and we know that side is 80, and we know this side is 60, okay? So, and it is a right angle, isn't it? Okay, it is a right angle triangle, because when you look at the base here, it's a rectangular base, so there would be a right angle there, yeah? Okay, we just about sort of draw it in, and we're looking down, as I said, from the sky on that triangle. So I've got these two sides, and we're going to work out the third side. So remember then, right, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So if I call this A and that B, of course C would be the longest side, okay? Um, so I've got 60 squared for A squared, B squared then will be 80 squared, and that will equal to C squared there. Now we've got to work this out without a calculator. So remember 60 squared is just 60 times 60, yeah? And 80 squared is 80 times 80. Okay, so 60 times 60, well, 6 times 6 is 36, and add the two zeros. And 80 times 80, well, 8 times 8 is 64, add the two zeros. So if I add them together, I'll then get C squared. Now, when you add these together, it actually comes up nice. It's 10,000. And remember then, to get C, if we know C squared is 10,000, to, to get C then, we've got a square root. And we, without a calculator, we can square root 10,000. And if you think about it, it's quite nice. Because if you think about it, 100 times 100 is 10,000, isn't it? Okay, so in other words, that is 100 squared. So when I square root 10,000, it comes out to be 100. So you just need to think about that for a minute and think, oh, yeah, that is a square number. Um, and 100 times 100 would, would give me that. So my longest sides here, this diagonal here, is 100, okay? So I now know that to be 100. However, I don't want all of it, don't I? I only want to halfway. So if I go halfway, that will just be 50, won't it? Because I'm just going to half this diagonal. I only want to go to the center point there, don't I? So it'll be half of 100, which will be 50. 
Now what you'll see is we've now got an upright triangle, okay? So I can draw it again here if, if it's clearer. An upright triangle whereby A is on the bottom and E is at the top. So it's that side there. And of course the centre then of your pyramid. So we know the height is 90 and we know that base there is 50. So what you do then is we just apply Pythagoras theorem again. And it'll give us AE. Okay, so we've got A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So if I call that A, that will be 50 and then square it. If I call this B, that will be 90 and square it and that will be C squared. So without a calculator, 50 squared. Remember now, 50 squared is 50 times 50. So right, if you want to write it down here, you can if it's easier to see that. 50 times 50. Well, 5 times 5 is 25 and add the two zeros. And 90 squared is 90 times 90. Well, 9 times 9 is 81 and add the two zeros. And that equals to c squared. Now, if you add them, okay, together, and we need to do that there. Um, well, let's do a bit of column addition here to check that. Doesn't matter where you write, okay, as long as it's on here. You show your workings. So if I add that, it comes to ten thousand six hundred. Okay, so that's what c squared is. So what have I got to do to get c? Well, of course, we've got to square root it. Now, that isn't going to be a, come out nice, right? It's not going to come out nice because, remember, 10,000 came, came out nice to be 100, but this is not so nice. But look at the question. It says you do not need to simplify your answer. Leave your answer as a surge. There it is. We can leave it like that. So AE is equal to the square root of 10,600.